Tell us about the times you had your campaign villains join your party in their endeavours. Bonus points if it isn't a redemption story, and they instead joined for weird or nonsensical reasons. Pathfinder game, sandbox universe, northern lands, shameless Skyrim ripoff. Yeah, let's be serious. Yeah. PCs are level 1 non-heroic. Cities not well defended because away from the front. Kobold raid. Kidnap children. Burn houses to deter pursuit. Players plus one volunteer for rescue. Given poor quality gear, some of which is broken. Chase ends near ancient tomb taken over by kobolds. Small waves of kobolds. Ground gives way. Separate bad guy. Now in the tomb. Surrounded. Need to fall back. Tomb of heroes. Masterwork gear. PC level. Meanwhile, other guy gets similar treatment as anti-paladin. The guy then became somewhat of a rival, sharing the PC's objectives. Wanted to resurrect the one hostage that died, protecting the town against another invading force, etc. But doing them in ruthless, cruel ways. Not hesitating to sacrifice lives and use underhanded tactics. He met an untimely death at the hands of a PC in a disloyal manner. So he came back as a Dullahan, and since justice was denied him, became the big bad evil guy, bent on destroying the city. I like that. It's, yeah. you know, like, it's one of those ones, I like to have the big bad old evil guy at least be introduced early on. Yeah, you know where I mean? people don't know it's... I know, because sometimes I feel like, you know, they just throw this, oh, this over-powerful evil menace at the very end. But For you've the sake of it, but you've, you've never, never met it, you've never had a reason to fight. Yeah, it kind of just gets thrown at yeah. you, you know what I mean? It's like, well, I suppose we're going to wrap this campaign up, so here you guys go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas I kind of like that intertwave and, yeah. like, you know, narrative. I don't know, like, yeah. I'm a big nerd, I don't care. I'm not 100% sure if this counts, but the villain of our campaign was supposed to be this guy named Kanto. He was a slaver prince of this massive empire. The problem was, when the DM finally had him meet us in person, we were so terrified of him that we immediately capitulated to him. In the moment we just wanted him off our backs because he scared the shit out of us, but eventually we became named henchmen. In the end he was a cool guy that helped us establish ourselves in the empire. We took out his rivals and he was willing to ignore our pet projects, as he called them. The slaves got magic hair and better living conditions, with a better chance of eventually becoming free men, so I like to think everyone benefited. The party were after a merfolk pirate named Theo, for blowing up a ship they were on and stranding them on a cursed island, as well as for kidnapping a princess. He surrendered, and they decided to go with it because the princess arrested him, and to cause him harm before his trial would violate his rights. They knew it was a ruse, but wanted the sweet reward for returning the princess to your family, so went with it. Theo proved to be a little more than a smarmy pain in the ass, who did very little until he turned on the party and defeated them and took all their MacGuffins and just after they fought a grilling marathon of foes. When they fought him later on, he died rather easily having abandoned his crew and aided only by a few magic relics. Isn't that always the case? <laughs> Karma. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thief Guild Elf Lady offered to run a scam with party. They refuse because they don't think they need her. Works against them when the party pulls off the job, ends up with damaged face and all her thieves dead. Later they chase her into the Feywild, where she tries to destroy Mithrandine because she's from there and has bad blood. Party stops her, but she wasn't at the final confrontation, and fled again. After the player who hated her wasn't in the grip anymore, she extended an offer to help stop the bigger evil. Party was way too leveled to be fighting some thieves guild at this point, and now acts as criminal go-betweens and smuggler of goods. Honestly, I am sorry, but it's like, not bad to have somebody with yeah that, that ability. Like, ability you know, someone, be, yeah. like you know, look, like, you never know when you need to sell stolen goods. Let's yeah. be serious. And if she has connections, yeah, like you know, I, I don't know. Like honestly, see if an NPC offers me like a pretty sweet scam. I'm just, I'm going to love it. I like you know, like <laughs> that's because you play a goblin. <laughs> like if it sounds like a good opportunity, there's no point in giving up on it. You know what I mean? If it sounds like a good opportunity, there can't be any consequences, no, right? No, of course not. There's never, there never is. Let's be serious. Like, you know, you just need to run away quick enough. You know, and you, you never get consequences. Roll for, you, <laughs> roll for stuff. Like, 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 you don't get consequences as long as you use your action to fucking dash, all right? That's all that matters. Years ago, in a Monty Hall-style 3.5 game at local game store, complete with guest player to pilot him. Long story short, the villain, Elf Prick Wizard, EPW. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, have I never heard that abbreviation before? <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. 
was an occasional quest giver, an all round arrogant ass to us for a dozen levels. We finally decided to kill him after making short work of DM's pet red verm. 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 <laughs> Fuck, worm. that was a like, weird way of saying it. Let's just keep going. <laughs> now DM let us use whatever splats we wanted and dropped crazy treasure like a holy avenger at 11th level. Also, while grandiose in storytelling, he is not too adept at rules or running monsters. You can almost see the sweat bead when DM knows we're going after EPW. Because despite knowing EPW is supposed to be epic level, he's not sure he'll be able to beat us with him. Next session, two weeks later, the time has come to raid EPW's tower. But in a twist, Monty Hall DM turns the thing over to the notorious local killer DM. He had been at the next table over watching a 40k game. It might be the only time I've actually heard an audible gasp during a D&D game. Killer DM built EPW and his tower. Things do not go well. MC Escher room layout, Sphinx, Stone Golems and Cloud Giants and a motherfucking mirror of opposition which costs the Ur Priest his miracle to destroy along with our doubles which were easily the deadliest thing we've ever fought until EPW shows up and disjoins all our magic. One maximised time stop later and he is separated, dimensions locked and trapped most of us. EPW deflects all of our spell snipers orbs and stun rays with his bare hands because epic feats, then pins him with a telekinesis so he doesn't run off. He laughs, kills us all with a wheel of the banshee heightened to 15 level. Then he casts wish to rewind time around to before he did it. Oh, fucking cruel. That is pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty mean. EPW tells us to stop screwing around and get back to solving the Cthulhu cult thing the campaign's main storyline, and wishes us to the far side of the planet. Because he thinks it's funny and slash or Monty Hall DM wants to run some oriental style sessions. Killer DM to Monty Hall DM. Did a good do- did a good- did a good- did I take a stroke? <laughs> what the fuck was that? Did I do good? Do I do good? Yes, you did very good. Did a good do? <laughs> yes, yes, you did do good. Oh, see, that does sound like a fun session, you know. There's another bit there. Yeah, no, let, let's keep going. Fast forward many months, we're coming down to the wire to stop the Cthulhu cult. Collect several allies we gained along the way. It's all about the friends we made along the way. Yeah. Mostly guest players who made characters for single sessions, when half our group didn't show. Along with some random angels and inevitables and shit we befriended. Plus one, Killer DM sits down at table with EPW, who's the only one who can cast the epic spell to get us into... Not really, but really, really dream world. He tags along to make sure we don't screw up. Does little outside of make sarcastic suggestions, but does cast a hell ball, which, though stupid, does roll a fun number of dice. <laughs> look, look, as long as you got a big handful of dice, it's always fun. Doesn't matter what you're doing. In the end, it's like an anime slash... Oh. Roroni... <laughs> Roroni? <laughs> oh, God. Roroni Kenshin Climax as we sacrifice allies to defeat obstacles so the party can make it to the final boss fight. EPW breaks away to fight some epic glitch with like 30 iron stones. The fight takes place off screen slash hand waved. In the end we are victorious. Sorta. Cthulhu went back to sleep, the cultists all died. A couple of allies survive plus elf prick wizard who shows up with fucked up robes and a black eye and 30 iron stones floating around him. He transports us back to the real world and says he never wants anything to do with us again. Look, at least he's honest at <laughs> yeah. this point. Like, you know, like, you can't like, call him that much of a dickhead if he's like, you know, look, guys, can you guys just fuck off? Leave I'm, me alone. I'm going to give you $100 to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Killer DM has alluded to the possibility that the Lich won and is impersonating EPW, since by the time we got there, Cthulhu was back asleep. And I don't know if that makes me happy or sad. I don't know, actually. That's. It sounds I, like a pretty interesting game. Yeah, I, I like lie. this. I like this game, honestly. Like, I, I enjoy anything like you know Cthulhu-esque. I love yeah. old gods, all that type of stuff. So, like, I've got a bit of soft point for it. But I, I like this one. This yeah, it pretty, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Hey guys, this is just a quick bit of promo. We got our website up and running and we have a massive restock on most of the models. However, one of the cool things about the website is if there's a model that you're waiting on. You can enter your email and be put on a waiting list and it's not just good for you so then you'll know when they're restocked. We can also see 
what you guys are waiting on and what we should be printing. <laughs> so either way, the models are by far the best way to support this channel and to help us do videos that YouTube would find inappropriate on the platform. <laughs> and like, let's be serious, the models are pretty based looking, so once again, just look at the titties. Look at the lizard titties! <laughs> but anyway, let's continue on with the video. First villain was a monster that was the crown bully who ran a monster fight club. Don't talk about fight club. Yeah, what are you planning on, mate? Grade A greaser asshole. Gets a sucker punch on one of the players during the first round. Player ends up beating his ass. His kid ends up getting godded by the real villain of that arc. Gets mopey and pissy. Players end up straightening out real villain. Begrudgingly thanks them. Joins them for the stop the apocalypse road trip because the world's going to end, so might as well. Never played to the end, but it was still mad fun. That's good. Yeah. Look, I'm just happy as long as people have a bit of fun, you know? Dark Heresy 2nd Edition game. Party got disposed of by their previous Inquisitor for reasons. Miraculously survived getting hell striked due to Xenos shenanigans. Travelled around with a criminal rogue traitor. Suddenly in one of their travels, they notice the former Inquisitors and Targeter mucking about. Party decides they need to figure out what their old Inquisitor is up to by spying on the Interrogator. Interrogator pick related is a sadist who loves torture to the point where even her Inquisitor tells her to calm down. Psyker gets voluntold for the mission. Psyker is a demon world character who is happy to go along with anything. What? How, how are you not dead? I'm sorry. <laughs> like, you know, see if you're from a demon world, no, you get purged. <laughs> like, no, purged. So the Psyker is a demon world character as he is a little, a little, a little. You got fucking summoned to the demon <laughs> world. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, come on, let's keep going. He is happy to go along with anything, even torture, which the interrogator is fond of. Because it's honestly better than living on a demon world. Anything's better than living on a demon world. <laughs> How are you from, like, that, that, that annoys me, actually. <laughs> but be seriously, it's like, no, that doesn't work. Psyker is also, on paper, 12 to 14 years old. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, no, the, you know, uh, no, she may look like she's 12, but she's actually a 400-year-old demon lord. Get it, guys? So it's, <laughs> so it's not creepy at all, not in the slightest. Okay, let's just keep going with this one. Group decides to try and disguise him just in case. Disguise ideas are tossed around. Hey, what if we disguise him as a sororitous Girl Scout selling cookies? The idea passes unanimously. Psyker sized frilly uniform is made. Psyker plays the role of Girl Scout surprisingly well. Even I'm sure he fucking got <laughs> All right. Yeah. Even comes up with at least three different spiff 40k cookie names. I roll in private to see how the interrogator reacts. Perception. Her lower stat. An interrogator. Interrogator. With and perce low perception. perception. I'm sorry, but the other things just don't go hand in hand. <laughs> like, you know, like, the, the, the very name, interrog. Let's just keep going. I'm not, I know, no, let's just keep going. So, perception, her lower stat. Passed with flying colours. Seeing through the disguise. Willpower, her higher stat. Failed tremendously against the disguise's charms. That is her fetish, Dutch JPG. <laughs> she immediately takes Psyker in and locks the place down. Rest of the party commences rescue mission, fighting some Xenos guards that were copies of their Legend of Zelda PCs from another game, but that's a long story. Okay, what? Wait, what? <laughs> what? Fights way to Interrogator's room. They're just playing innocuous games. Interrogator is so infatuated with cross-dressing twink Psyker that she joins the party. On the condition that the Psyker wore that dress from time to time. Oh my god. <laughs> oh sweet. Oh my Not god. my proudest NPC development <laughs> moment, but one of the more memorable ones. <laughs> Fuck me, boys. I have, I have absolutely no words for this. Um, I suppose the only thing yeah. I can say is, well, let's end the video here then, will yeah. we? Yeah, let's just end it here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna start talking about that because uh, <laughs> reasons. But uh, yeah, like you know, look, we've already said art one. We've said it in a few videos now. Um, Lily, what happened to Where us? James made a deal with a lich. Well, that was because like there was only three of us showed up to the session. We we're at the very end of a four parter. And like you know, we showed up. It was only three of us. And all in all, now we work for a lich. So. Yeah, like I, re <laughs> I recreated that scene from the movie with Benny. Do you remember where he's like, oh yeah, the glasses and all that. So that's kind of what happened to us. But we've talked about that many a time before. But let us know what happened to you. You know, have you ever? Have you ever had anything like this happen in one of your games like, where you know, the big bad evil guy just joins? <laughs> yeah, like you know, just for whatever reasons. Like you know what? 
actually we're not that different yeah. you know what I mean maybe we can work together and like you know maybe it's a good relationship for both parties you know what I mean yeah let us know down below and while you're here check out the links check out the website oh the yeah we got, we got some really lovely new models up for sale oh, so oh, oh. new stuff please don't make that noise yeah. Megan oh yeah oh my god please <laughs> That actually makes me fucking... Hit oh. subscribe and hit the notification bell No, no, well. no, no, no. Make the noise and then say, yeah, to that no subscribe button. Yeah. <laughs> no, do it, do it. No. <laughs> yeah, no. Gonna, yeah. So hit subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake, Megan.